talk to us about your uh, Briggs' global competition strategy, how you're competing globally today, where you're looking to take that over the next couple of years. Yeah, if you look at Briggs over the last several years, um, we've been more of a, what I'll call a U.S centric company that has done things overseas. So if a product will work, if we, we develop products for the U.S. and then we'll ship them to Europe, and if they work in Europe, great. Um, if they don't, we, we try and adapt them, but sometimes we don't spend a lot of money doing that. Well, that's changing. We're getting to the point now where we are uh, really taking a global view of uh, what we can do, what our capabilities are. And so if you look at it, we now have manufacturing over in China. We've got manufacturing in the Czech Republic. And we're looking to expand that. Uh, we look at China as being a really important market, not from the standpoint of going in and manufacturing to export back to the U.S. or to Europe, but rather as a market in and of itself. As China continues to uh, industrialize, uh, you still have to feed 1.3 billion people. And so when you look at that, mechanization is going to happen no different than how mechanization happened here in the U.S. several years ago when the U.S. went from an ag economy to an industrialized economy. So we're looking all over the place. I mean, it's, it's Southeast Asia, it's places like India, it's Latin America. And so we really have changed uh, uh, a lot of the processes and the way we do things to really take advantage of some of those things. Pete, how about you? Well, for our business, Today, uh, a relatively small percent actually um, is exported. We probably export about 10 to 15 percent of our overall business. And as we look at our, the businesses we're in, we're clearly on the, the value-added side of the equation. We're not a low-cost provider. We're a value-added provider. And in many of the markets, uh, they really aren't looking for the value-added solution. They're looking for the low-cost solution. So. Uh, we've struggled with how to expand into uh, Asia and other markets there. Uh, where I'd say we're successful is when we really partner with some of our key customers and users that value uh, what we have to offer. So when we look at uh, providing uh, traction drives for the underground mining market, uh, there's an example where we'll partner with our, uh, our uh, partner there, and if they want to go into China, we'll follow them there. Uh, in our elevator business, uh, we ship product all over the world, but we really provide our North American partners for that, and then they have the channels into that market, so that's been effective. But for us, it really comes down to if they value what we can provide, then it makes sense for us to follow them um, wherever they go in the world. Todd, I intentionally put this on here because I remember a cover story I did a couple years ago with yourself. and and Bob Schumann, who, who's since retired. And the cover story, the topic was the boomerang effect, talking about some of the manufacturers bringing work back that had gone overseas. And Signacast had been pretty successful in, in doing some of that. Has that trend continued in, in your company? The, tr the trend has continued. Uh, we've, we've seen a lot of growth from people that have gone overseas and it's failed and they've come back here. Now the challenge that we have is due to the economic environment. A lot of the original equipment manufacturers are really moving offshore to find their growth. Okay. And so one of our challenges is we've got to find a way to service those people. To keep supplying, to keep supplying them. And, and our challenge is we're, we're very high tech. I mean, we're, we're the proof that high tech doesn't need to be biotech. I mean, we're running a foundry lights out. We run it, uh, we, we, we have revenues of 30 million out of one of our foundries and we run it with 13 people. But the intellectual property that we have in that foundry we just can't put in China. Right. We just can't sacrifice that. We'll lose all of that. And so we need to find other ways of servicing that, either from here or finding other solutions offshore. Okay, great. Now, Neil, so much of Orion I think of as, you know, Wisconsin, Midwestern, and domestic-based. Are you guys starting to play, is your company starting to play in the, uh, the, the global field, so to speak? Our business uh, actually, even though we're based in Wisconsin, we probably do, uh, I don't know, probably something less than 10% of our business here in the state. Uh, we ship to, you know, all across North America, Mexico, the Caribbean. We've uh, done a couple of jobs abroad, China, uh, in South America. That was really more of a kind of a high-level technology bake-off. Uh, you know, Pepsi Americas, as an example, brought in technology from all around the world to see what was best for their future, the facility of the future. And so we were pleased that we won that competition. Given the fact that here in America, 
we as Americans, we have something less than 5% of the world population, last time I saw, but yet we consume about 30% of the energy. There's a lot of opportunities here. So, you know, for us, it's really a matter of focus, and uh, there's, there's so much to do here. It just seems to make sense just with the, the practical side of things to keep as much of our focus here in the U.S.